this question asks, which of the following statements is false? So we have four different statements to think about um, and then answer choices to select. So let's work our way through each of these different um, options. Our first statement says the transition state of the first propagation step of radical bromination most closely resembles the alkane starting material. Um, this is a little bit of a difficult statement to think about because um, you have to really understand the mechanism of the reaction. So the transition state of the first propagation step or radical bromination most closely resembles um, what molecule? Um, if you remember, we talked about radical bromination and radical chlorination having kind of different selectivities. Radical bromination is much more selective um, for um, the more stable radical intermediate than chlorination is. And we talked in class for, um, about the reason why. So if we are thinking about um, chlorination, in the chlorination reaction, we have an exergonic reaction, and there's not a very significant difference because we have that exergonic um, first propagation step. When we talk about bromination, we actually saw something different. In bromination, um, we had very kind of different um, results because this is an endergonic reaction. And so there were very um, different, um, big differences between um, you know, selectivities because of the fact that we had this endergonic step. The transition state is kind of this peak right here in each case. And in chlorination, the transition state is closer in energy to the starting material. Um, so that is going to be um, important because the transition state is mostly going to look like the alkane. And so it's not going to be very selective. In brumination, the transition state is more um, close in energy to the radical intermediate. So each of these would represent the radical intermediate. And because of that, we see different variations um, of stabilities for, say, a primary transition state, a secondary transition state, or a tertiary state, transition state. So because we have um, the transition state more closely, um, more close in energy to the radical intermediate, um, that means that the transition state structure looks more like a radical. And so that's why we see the differences here. Um, and that kind of relates back to the Heyman postulate. So if we go back to our statement, the transition state of the first propagation step of radical bromination most closely resembles the alkene starting material, we can say that that's false because it, is more closely related in energy to the radical intermediate instead. Okay? And that's kind of the key reason why we see differences in selectivity for chlorination versus bromination. Let's take a look at the second um, statement. There are two propagation steps involved in the radical halog halogenation of alkanes. And this is a true statement. We see um, both hydrogen abstraction and halogen abstraction as our two key steps. So hydrogen and halogen abstraction are occurring in the propagation of this reaction. The third statement, radical bromination of alkanes is more selective than radical chlorination of alkanes. So we just talked about that in regards to statement number one. So the answer here is true. Um, if it had said less selective, then that would have been a false statement. Okay, last statement, statement number four, both radical bromination of alkanes and radical chlorination of alkanes produce racemic mixtures upon the creation of a new chiral center. And this is um, also a true statement. Radical intermediates are generally considered to be trigonal planar. So you can have attack from the top face or from the bottom face. So when you add that chlorine or bromine, it can happen from either the top or the bottom. And so that's why we generally see um, kind of racemic mixtures of product. So if we are thinking about which statements are false, only statement one is false. So that means our answer has to be A.